Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're back working on our game tutorial and we're just going to start this up and what are we going to work on this time? Huh. Alright. So right now, our game, when we run it, we have our little animated guy. He looks like crap, but you know, whatever. Can't go through anything. And you know, he can't go through this little tile. But he can run around our map. We have a tile-based background. Now, what is something we need to add to this game? Well, we need a little bit of action for our game. So, what are we going to do for that? Um, um, how are we going to make action? What are we going to add? Well, let's make a simple projectile. How does that work? How does that sound? So, first, we'll just head over to our my project. And we're just going to add... Ex no, we're going to add a new image. New PNG image. And we're going to call it projectile. All right? Projectile doesn't sound that bad, so image attributes. We'll change this to 32 by 32. And we're gonna make him a fireball kind of deal. Yeah, fireball and all kinds of good stuff like that. Yeah, I like that fireball. Give it like a couple dabs of yellow in there. <clears throat> Alright. So there's our projectile. We got our projectile done. Now we need to. <clears throat> let's um first we need to do a structure and that structure will be um structure projectile and that'll contain and bool uh, dim usable as boolean dim xlock as yeah dim usable as boolean and um Dim director as direction, and we're going to boom. We're gonna need its direction. We're gonna need its if it's usable. Yeah, that sounds about right. Now, now we're gonna go down here to our select case statement, which uh, six, and we're gonna add a new select case. Case keys dot space. Now. What's gonna happen is if usable, if oh wait, first we need to declare our projectile. So we're gonna go up here to our globals and add dim prod prej as projectile. So a projectile, we have a little projectile structure. Now if now if prod dot usable equals true. Then select case as it player der. Yep, player der. Case down, case left, case right, case up. And then that's just going to set our. The, this is what we're going to do is we're just going to set the direction of. um of the what what way our projectile is gonna move so proj dot usable equals false then and um so if direction equals down well let's think about when we run this so when we run this nothing special should happen if if our fireball when we shoot our fireball using space which be, as you can see because of the way our movements currently set up he moves regardless of if W, S, or D, or press. There's a way we can fix that, but we're going to do that later. If he's facing this way, we want this fireball to spawn right there. If he's moving up, we want it right there to shoot that way. If he's going that way, we want him to shoot that way. And if he's going that way, we want it to shoot that way. So, that's why we're selecting its direction. So, we're going to set... We're also going to put an... Um, uh, yeah. We're going to need to add a picture box to our form. So, where's our picture box? Hmm, that picture box. And we're gonna change it to pick projectile. I'm gonna move that. I'm gonna set its location up here. And we're gonna set it to like its height to be what did we give it? Yeah, 32 by 32. So 32 by 32. Boom, there we go. Now form1.vb. So on the form load, we're gonna come down here because I wanna set Pick projectile dot x 
equals 32 equals negative 100, not x, top equals negative 32. Pick projectile dot left equals negative 32. That's just always off the screen, so when we run our application like this, it's not there. We don't have to deal with it. We also need to bring them to the front though, so so pick projectile dot bring the front. Bring the front. Okay, there we go. So select case if if usable is equals true, then it's gonna equal false. Now first now we have our um when, now if we're facing down, we're gonna want our fireball to spawn at, at the at our player's feet. So we're gonna have what are we gonna use? How are we gonna do this? Let me think for a second. Okay. So our player is thirty two by thirty two, so um pick projectile dot top equals pick player dot top plus pick player dot height dot height so check this now boom okay that didn't work the way I wanted it's because does it have no limbs something like that's gotta be wrong I think it's because it doesn't have an image we also need to okay we'll go back to the form and give him his image where's his image and boom projectile make it a fireball just because I like fire boom that didn't work oh yeah cuz usable was never initialized is true so we we'll go back to our form mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is in the form load that's our animation that's animation code okay and we'll do rods.usable equals true let's see if that works because we're going to want it to initialize as true as well I haven't for the life of me been able to figure out why that doesn't work hmm anyways don't worry we'll fix this in a second now if he's facing the left let's look let's think about the left real quick that's the left this is our left we're gonna want it to spawn halfway up the players like so it's centered with the player so we're going to use pick projectile dot oh yep that's what I forgot I know why that isn't working um pick projectile we're gonna X that list so you can see the code battle dot left equals pick player dot left Yep, just there we go. So now we're facing down. Boom! There's a little fireball. We just set him there, but we want it to move. So we're gonna get back in the code, and if he's facing the left, we're gonna need so pick projectile dot top. Hmm. So we want it to be centered. So it'll be equals pick player dot top minus. Yeah, so we're gonna so we're just gonna set the top to its top. Pick player dot top plus zero point five times pick player dot height minus zero point five times pick player pick projectile dot height. There we go. Now let's try this. Heading left. Heading. Le oh yeah, we didn't set as. Uh, we didn't set the other value. So pick projectile dot left equals pick player dot left minus pick projectile dot width. Boom. There we go. We set it up in the side now. So this code will be pretty much the same for the right, except the left left will be plus pick player dot width now we set this up for the right and bam there it is on our right and our up will be pick when it's up we're gonna have we're gonna want its top to be equal to the pl player dot top plus the pro minus the projectile height so it'll be pick player dot okay so pick projectile dot top is it top left pick projectile dot top equals pick player dot 
top minus pick projectile dot height and pick projectile dot left equals pick player dot left just because top and the bottom is the same so we would want our our fireball to move regardless of what is happening so we're going to uh, go to our form and we're going to need to view our toolbox and we're going to need to add a timer and this timer will eventually become the timer for everything that's a text box not a timer so where's my timer here we go added a timer we're going to change we're just going to make this player timer because this will be very relevant in my next tutorial when i redo the movement so we'll do 10 and enabled equals true and I didn't want the form load. We're going to double click our timer to bring up the timer on tick code. I assume you know how to use timers. If not, I'll do a tutorial on it later. But right now, I'm just going to assume you do. So we're going to first, so in our timer, on our timer, select case, select case proj.dir. Case down, case left, case right. And case up so when when the fireball is heading down as in it's going this way on the screen we need what to happen to it we need the top to add so pick projectile dot top plus equals one now nah, yeah plus equals one we'll see how fast it is pick projectile dot so when it's heading left we're gonna have to left minus equal one and we're just gonna do that there and then for the right, we're going to do pick projectile dot top left left plus equals one and up pick projectile dot left dot top minus equals one. So the movement's just like our players. And now we're going to check some. Now we have it set up so that we can shoot our fireball. Well, is, that, is our timer not enabled? Is that our problem? Enabled is true. Intervals 10. Player timer on tick. Oh, yes. We need to give it a starting direction, right? Is that right? I think so. So, proj, proj dot direction. Is it? Direction equals. We'll just give it up. Now, when we do this, I screwed that up. Pardon me, guys. So we're going to, when he's going down, the top needs to plus equal one, up, down, oh, I remember what I did wrong here. We never actually set the proj's direction, so proj.dir equals we're just going to set proj.dir equals player player dot player dir. now we try this and there we go but see the thing is we can't shoot our fireball again I keep forgetting lines and codes you guys just let it slide I'm sorry we need to be able to reset our fireball but since we're not using a race for this since we're just using a really crappy method which will actually improve later which is le which is the object of this tutorial we're going to start out for a really crappy VB game and then slowly improve it to make it better so we come down here so if pick projectile dot top if it's top plus pick projectile dot height dot height is less than zero how does that sound and then proj dot usable equals true and we're going to need to do the same for three only conditions now if pick projectile dot left plus pick projectile dot width is less than zero then proj dot usable equals true and we're gonna go up there and change the fireball code so it moves faster now if pick projectile dot left to right top top is greater than me dot height that's the height of the form. Proj dot usable equals true. And if 
pick projectile dot left is greater than me dot width and then pros dot usable equals true sweet so we have a little fireball up and running and let's shoot them around a little bit um index out of range what happened here it's kind of mod two player dirt minus one why did that just suddenly happen well it seems to be working now see now we can shoot our fireball again but we can't until our little guy until it goes off the screen so let's up his velocity a little bit so plus five plus five plus five plus five five times faster yeah there we go now a little fireball can zip around do 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 sweet so now we have it so we can shoot a little fireball around that's basic projectile stuff it's it's better to use it with an array but I'm not teaching that and you can even use your test collision function that we have in the code to make it so our pick projectiles dot visible property the um, picture boxes property is set to fall is um visibility is set to false if it collides with our little NPC there and you can also change the NPC image based on it you can just modify this code a little bit and you can have a lot of fun with it actually at this point and next tutorial I think I think we're gonna do something with this little NPC we got right here but for right now we'll just leave them as is and I really don't like how it kinda seems to slide like this so we're gonna go up here to our form load where's our form load form load and we're gonna set a little property me dot double buffered equals true now this will either kill my frame rate or make it look a lot more slick yeah it didn't change anything but double buffering is really good if you're gonna be rendering a lot of sprites like that like this a lot of picture boxes because what will happen is the screen will flicker when we get a lot of stuff on the screen it'll flicker and just look really bad every time you update something so it's best to you know double buffer it so that way when we get a lot of stuff flying around on the screen it won't like have a flicker and look bad so I think this is the end of this tutorial double buffer I don't think it, it didn't do anything with this one but later on we have when we have a lot of stuff moving on the screen it'll make it look a lot more slick and I'll just go down through the code with you one more la one more last time we had a structured projectile usable a direction we declared it here we didn't do anything up here didn't do anything but then we got to if you press space and use if the projectile is that usable is equal to true um then the usable is equal false and the dir is set to player dir and we select case why don't we select yeah we just use player dir because they're still the same at this point so then, then we set the location of our projectile based on the player and where he is on the screen and then we come down yeah and then we do nothing here we set double buffer to true so that way later on when stuff's when a lot of stuff's drawn on the screen there won't be a flicker um we set the starting positions for our projectile we set its starting variables we come down did nothing in here we did nothing in here did nothing in here we added a timer and our player timer every time it ticked we modified our we um, every time a player timer ticked we modified the projectile we set the top we um, set the usable property true on the projectile and pretty much we just made this game pretty slick so I'll see you guys later